Good morning. And good morning to all those watching our live stream. What a beautiful day to come together and thank God for the life of Henry Hugh and for the eternal life he has in Jesus Christ his Lord. My name is Pastor Bill Douthwaite and I had the honor of being Henry's pastor and Etta's pastor for the last 24 years. They were dear friends of mine so this is a very special time together. Everything you need is printed in your worship folder and so let's stand and we'll sing our first hymn together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Henry Hugh was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. You may be seated. Together we read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to Henry and to all your servants, who having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Turning to the Word of God for hope and encouragement today, the first reading is from the Old Testament book of Lamentations. The third chapter. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, what I have told you, that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of our Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Discouraged. Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven's home? My constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me.
Thank you, Janice. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the last time I got to speak with Henry was sometime last November or December. Henry always sat right to my left at Bob Evans on Thursday mornings with about 10 other guys. And I didn't know it at the time. But when I said goodbye to Henry that day, it would indeed be goodbye. I had no idea what would unfold over the next six months. None of us did. I didn't know. I wouldn't get to talk to or see Henry again. Only the Lord knows the number of days we have to live. Only he knows the length of our lives. That's why we treasure each one of them. However, every day is not a treasure just because life is short, but it is because the Lord is long on love and mercy. As we read from the Old Testament just a few minutes ago, his love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning, even this morning. The love and the mercy of God is filling this gathering, our worship service, and it will fill all of our thoughts and our conversations today with hope. 24 years ago, Henry was one of the faithful members of Shepherd of the Coast who welcomed me as pastor here. 24 years later, he was still a faithful worshiper, a student of God's word, and a very dear friend. I'm still not used to not seeing Henry there on Thursday mornings. Henry would, in a very fascinating way, always order his meal exactly the opposite of the way that I did. I would say, I'll have two eggs, bacon, and an English muffin. Henry always ordered it in the opposite direction. He said, I'll have the English muffin, sausage links, and two eggs. I'm not sure why that was, I just noticed that. It was really interesting. And there at breakfast, we found out that you cannot order a one-egg omelet. Okay, one day Henry told the waitress, I want a one-egg omelet. The waitress said, you can't have a one-egg omelet. And we said, well, why can't I have a one-egg omelet? I said, I'm sorry, we, we just can't prepare that. So he said, I'll just have one scrambled egg. And then everything was okay. <laughs> Henry would usually be the first to leave in order to make it to his Tai Chi class on time. And when we learned that Tai Chi sometimes involved a sword, we had a much greater respect for Henry <laughs> and for that martial art. Though Henry wasn't able to do as much as he could in his younger years, Henry loved to make the rounds and visit, especially anybody who had a dock where he could fish. When I would visit folks like Harry and Pat Van Patten or Don and Florence Brown, Richard and Loretta Black, they would always say, oh, Henry was here. He came by to talk and we had a drink and do a little fishing. The company of others was so important to Henry. And I know that many enjoyed his company too, including myself. Henry was one of many in our congregation who taught me about the riches of the Jamaican culture. And maybe if Carmen's watching, or Gail and Harvey are watching, or you, Florence, you'll remember some of these names, because they go way back. Along with Etta, of course. There's Carmen and Leonard, Roy and Hyacinth, Mercedes and Maurice, 
Myrtle, Skipper, Ether, Ruby, and Norman, Eunice, and Eddie, all part of this Caribbean group of people who just embraced me and tried to teach me as much as they could about the beauty of Jamaica. Now, Lisa, it's interesting. You told me your dad did not drink, but he knew a lot about Jamaican rum. <laughs> and he was very careful to tell me, Pastor, there's two kinds of rum. There's the white rum and there's the red rum. Don't drink the white rum. Only drink the red. He said, however, the white rum has medicinal properties. And he had this wonderful story about a friend of his who was so sick, he was coughing and wheezing, and he just couldn't catch his breath. And so he took a rag, and he soaked it with white rum, and he inhaled it. And a moment later, he was fine. He could breathe, he stopped coughing, and the way Henry said it, he said it was a miracle. Henry also introduced me to meat patties. I had no idea what meat patties were. Remember, he was going to start a business selling them. I think he even bought a machine to make meat patties. I don't know that he ever sold any, but, but they're wonderful. And he also gave me some scotch bonnet peppers, the ones that he grew in his front yard. Those are very hot. <laughs> Much hotter than I was used to. He taught me a few things about the Obia man. Don't go to the Obia man, okay? That's, that's the lesson that I learned. And he and Edda tried to teach me phrases. You might hear more on the island. Uh, how you be, what you say, things like that. Um, I, I still have a long way to go. But Henry, Henry, truly experienced love, 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 mercy, mercy and faithfulness. With family, with family and with friends. With friends. And in this and church. church. And that's because Jesus came both to die and rise again from the dead. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and his victory over death, there is nothing that can ever separate us from God's love. We daily experience that mercy of God in the forgiveness of our sins. And the one who came through in a big way. Jesus Christ. God is so faithful. And that same good news is to give us hope today too. There is great hope for this world when you know someone like Henry who quietly yet powerfully lived out his faith in Jesus Christ. There is great hope for our families when you know someone like Henry who leaves behind a legacy of faith that continues to shape who you are. There is great hope for the church who gets to worship with Henry, a reminder that we'll be worshiping with him again soon. And isn't it a blessing that all of these memories and all of these stories about Henry still bring us joy, still bring a smile to our face, I have a few more examples. I remember Henry asking me to pray one time for a friend of his. I think he lived in England, and his name was Egbert. And for some reason, I had never heard that name on a real person before. Uh, but it is an old English name, and it's a very respected name. It's just not a common name, but I, I thought that was wonderful. Always made me smile. And the other person he always reminded me was, of was Hugh. Hugh was his friend from England. And I always told him, you need to adopt Hugh. So his name would be Hugh Hugh. <laughs> I got a big kick out of that and so did Henry. Anyway, I know that that Thursday morning in November will not be the last time I get to speak to Henry. Or so many others who have gone ahead of us to be with the Lord. For one day, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
And so we will always be with the Lord. In his name, amen. Lisa, if you would like to share some thoughts with us, uh, we have this microphone set up for you right over here. Right here. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry we had to come together at this difficult time, but um, we're going to just celebrate. Sorry. We're going to celebrate someone that I dearly love, and I know you all love too. Um, and I thank you today, Pastor, for um, putting this together for us so that you know here we can worship together and, and celebrate his life, as well as those who are there on Facebook Live. It's the first time I'm actually doing that, so I feel kind of special. <laughs> and, um, you know, people from around the world are here listening to um, him, I mean, listening to this service today. So, I don't know, getting a little feedback. Uh, are you okay? Um, uh, we're hearing from anywhere from uh, South Africa to uh, London, England, um, Jamaica, and uh, of course, New York area, Long Island, Queens, Bronx, etc. And uh, oh, my sister in Hawaii, who, by the way, is sorry she could not be here due to the COVID virus has been a little challenging uh, for all of us in some capacity to, um, you know, reach our loved ones in a, in a given time. Uh, so it's been uh, difficult. Sorry. It's been difficult for us to coordinate. It's been difficult to coordinate. Sorry. <laughs> But um, in the long run, what's really nice is that we were able to do something because nowadays it's been so challenging for people to just come together and do things for their loved ones during this uh, crazy pandemic. So um, I'm one of the blessed ones to have this opportunity. And my thing, my father is really excited about the fact that he gets to be on Facebook. He, he's like, I'm on the Facebook. I'm like, Dad, you don't get it. <laughs> you just don't understand social media. But the fact that he's now relevant and, 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 and on, on Facebook, I think he's probably smiling. He's like, I knew it was going to happen for me. Anyway, um, well, anyway, I'm, I just can't believe we're here at this moment because, you know, I thought I would have had my father for 10, 20 years, but as Pastor says, our days are numbered. We never know when we're going to leave, but it's always, you know, we just have to cherish every day as if it's the last. And so I just ask you all to do that with your own loved ones and friends as you move forward from this day. Um, God gave, uh, gave us Henry, um, my father, uh, 84 years ago, and um, he was here to get his job done. His life started in a parish of Trelawney, uh, Jamaica, in the town of Falmouth, which is by the sea, which I think gave my father the opportunity to fish from an early age and jump off bridges, that's another story, <laughs> um, to Julia Barnett and Frankie Hugh. His parents were business owners there. My grandmother was a, um, had a local general store and a restaurant, and my grandfather was a chef and a tailor. Dad was the last of nine children. From the moment he was born, he always heard noise at any given moment, and he had a crowd around him. I guess that's why he's such a social, he was always such a social person, and he could always navigate a crowd. As Pastor mentioned, you know, he would do things like, you know, go to prayer breakfast and go to people's homes, find his way at someone's dock fishing. I'm like, how are you? It's like Waldo. You're always somewhere, you know? <laughs> so I was just like, you know, Dad, that, that's him. And I think I'm a little bit like that, too. I just find myself in that space, you know, uh, always greeting and talking to people, you know, and, and I guess that's why I'm in sales and marketing at this point in my life. <laughs> but anyway, um, when my father, after my father left Jamaica, he went to Toronto to stay with uh, his grand aunt, uh, who lived in Toronto, Canada to explore a new life, something different than Jamaican as a, Jamaica as a very young man. And uh, that's a, it, it's a young man. Anyway, um, I have a story to share with you as it pertains to my father and uh, trying to make his way from Toronto to the US. So supposedly when my aunt, his grand aunt had, the, um, um, board, had a boarding house, she had a few young men who were trying to make their way through life as well. And so at that point, um, you know, 
my dad said, you know, I want to go to U the U.S. as well. So um, this one guy, I'll just call him the mule, <laughs> he took, he was one of the people that would get people over the border. Those days of TSA and all that really didn't exist. It was kind of like a shake, hand, shake someone's hand and keep it moving. So my father, uh, he said that um, the guy gave him instructions on how they're going to get over the border. It wasn't like he was smuggling him in or anything like that. It's just there was a way to do it, a special systematic way to do it. So my father said to me, told us that he was supposed to, when he got to the border, and the border patrol would ask him a question about, um, you know, who he was, he said, he was to say he's from Toronto, Canada. So my father said, okay. So he had a couple of weeks to figure this out, and he kept saying to himself, okay, how am I going to say it? You just can't say it as a, like, um, you know, you're Jamaican or you're American. You have to say it as a Canadian. So you, instead of saying Toronto, you had to say Toronto. So my father said that he practiced for weeks, Toronto, 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 Toronto. And so now the day came, and the mule's driving, and these two guys are in the back with my father, and Border Patrol says, you three, where are you born? First one, Toronto. <laughs> Second one, Toronto. My father, you, Toronto. <laughs> And hence, he gets to the U.S. So that's how my father came to America for his, you know, for, for his, his next life. At that point, um, the, and also, by the way, the gentleman said, welcome to America. My dad got along with many, oh, sorry. Um, then my father ended up uh, settling up in uh, Brooklyn, uh, New York, where the, we called the other Jamaica. And he met my mom at Irons who also was, of course, um, a member of the church. Uh, they married and moved to the Bronx. They raised myself and my sister, Adrian, and opened up several, and made many friends there, as well as um, opened up several business opportun as opportunities revealed themselves. And the last one he had before he retired was in Gramercy Park, um, New York City, at 23rd and Park Avenue South. And he retired and, and came to Palm Coast, and here we are. And we appreciate so many years of you being the pastor and the, the, the uh, congregation and the support for my family over the last 24 years. Um, there are several things you may not know about my father, or you may know about my father. Um, of course, he was a great dad, a brother, an uncle, godfather, and son, advisor at times. He loved to fish, play tennis, talk about his life in Jamaica, read books, music, dance, and travel. However, I don't know if you knew that my father was actually a horror, hor hor I can't even pronounce it, horologist. Does anyone know what that is? Any idea? Basically, a horologist, well, he, I don't think he knew that either, but anyway, ba basically, it's a skilled watchmaker and timekeeper. That's, my, my, that's what my father was. And at this point, I don't even know if he knew he was one. <laughs> but as I was doing my research about watchmakers and timekeepers, I realized that he was a horologist. And my father was the first black man to have a business on 47th Street in the Diamond District. At 5'2", meaning his height, dad was a giant in his own right. He had no intrepidations about what he could do. He didn't see barriers, it, whether he didn't, he only had, only had a high school education or his height, he didn't matter to him. But he, and, and he, as he broke his barriers, I don't even think he understood that he broke them. Many of you know, um, so let it be known for the record, it's documented that my father was a horologist, and that information may be helpful to each and every one of you when you're on Jeopardy, just letting you know. <laughs> um, I want to tell you another story, a couple of stories about my dad. Um, you know, um, my dad um, got along with many people, as we talked about earlier. He had multi-generational friendships. Um, I just received a, a, a text from a, a, a dear friend of mine, and he said he always treated him as a friend. And that, that's, what, that's who he was. He just, like, picked up a conversation with you as if, you know, the first time meeting you as if he knew you forever. And then you just get into, somehow you're, he's in your business, and you're in their, his business, and you're having dinner and patties and all this kind of stuff, but you know, I appreciate that. I, I so appreciate about him, and I do realize that you know he is such a kind soul. And um, also, I thought about my father. I thought it was always amazing about my father. He always liked to talk about politics, current events, 
you know, history, and he just knew everything, you know, and again, here's someone who didn't necessarily have a college degree, but you could ask him anything, and he was so knowledgeable as if he was there with Patton, uh, you know, whatever, I'm just thinking, you know, Julius Caesar, I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? But he just, he would just read and read and read and just listen to documentaries, and I was always fascinated with that, but I always told him, I said, listen, if I'm on Jeopardy, or Jeopardy, or who wants to be a millionaire? I need you as my lifeline, because that's the only way I'm gonna get through this whole thing, okay? But um, the funny thing about my father also was that he was current and relevant. So I have another funny story to tell you. One day, I had to take him to the doctor, and it was in um, DC, and it was several stories high. So my father says, I have to go to the restroom, and usually sometimes these places do have a restroom in the, in the um, actual doctor's office, but unfortunately they didn't. They said, here's the key, Mr. Hugh, the, the bathroom is outside. So my father goes, and um, he comes. I was like, how long is it going to take him? He ain't back yet. I was getting kind of nervous. So finally he comes back. And I said, Dad, what took you so long? I said, everything OK? He said, I couldn't find the bathroom. He says, on the, the floor that we're on, there was a ladies' room, but I couldn't find the men's bathroom. And I said, really? He says, I had to search and search and search. He said, I searched so hard for that men's bathroom. I would have taken a transgender's bathroom at that moment. I said, <laughs> I was like, I, you know, that's the kind of thing you like this. You're my father. <laughs> I don't need to hear these conversations. I'm going to have to have them with you. But that's how he was. He just knew everyone, all their business, everything was current and relevant. And, and I, could ne I could always share something with him because I knew he had some, we, also, we always had this point of reference that we could talk to each other about. Um, also, let's see, what else I got about for my father, it's just so much, um, there's so much in so little time, but anyway, um, so, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> so to make sure, okay, so anyway, fast forward, you know, I have my children, Julian and Soleil, and, um, you know, he has his grandchildren, and he has this very fruitful life, but unfortunately today, this is where we are, and very sad about it. When the doctor passed, he told me, um, and I was of course shocked and numb by it all, that he passed away at 11.15 in the morning. Actually, today's Wednesday, right? Yeah, so 11.15 this morning, about half an hour ago, he passed away. But that's significant to who my father was, because like I said, he was a um, uh, horologist. <laughs> and, um, if you know conventional, conventional winding clocks that work with a chime, they chime every 15 minutes. So while we're all saddened by his untimely death, I see comfort. He left us too soon, but he was right on time to meet God at that moment. How poetic. H, I call him HGH, meaning Henry Godfrey Hugh, will be missed by myself, my sister Adrian, his grandchildren, Julian, Daisy, Soleil, Willow, his son-in-laws, Carl and Joe, and numerous nieces, nephews, goddaughter, godsons, adopted son, Jimmy, <laughs> um, and, um, and longtime, lifelong friends. Not a day will go by and know, and, and by and know when, when we think about him because we're either traveling, fishing, reading a book, there's some reference to Jamaica, or attending a family function. My, we all checked some sort of bucket list item with him and wish we could have completed many more. However, we will, as we try to move forward, know we will make them hap happen in our, in our own minds, but as if we were with him. It gives us comfort, Dad, that you will be with Mommy. Please don't give her a hard time. Honestly, she'll be happy to see you again. Your parents, Mama Julie and, uh, and uh, Grandpa Frankie Hugh, I can only hear my grandmother say in Patois, boy, I'll come in your yard. <laughs> and his sisters and brothers, Uncle Thomas, Aunt Louise, Uncle Atai, Uncle Fritz, Uncle Fred, Aunt Loretta, and Aunt, and Aunt Una. But what I, I would love to know is the day he meets my godfather, Uncle Michael, and his, one of his other best friends, Uncle Darrell. 
um, at that time, I can only hear in the back of my mind of, of a conversation that they will have. My father, this is because they, have, they, they passed away many, many years ago, about 20 to 30 years in, in, in span. And um, I can only imagine the conversation going like this. My father, man, the night when Barack Obama stepped on the stage to become the 44th president of the United States, and it would go on and on, my uncle Michael, Barack Obama, who that? My father, he was the fat first black president, man, what do you mean? Uncle Michael, stop lying. Isn't that true? My father, if you go online, Uncle Darrell, online, oh, what that? <laughs> because they never experienced these things. And these are things my father experienced in his lifetime because he was given the gift of maybe 20 to 30 more years than, um, than some of these, his, his friends and family. But anyway, like I was saying to you before, you know, I hope, I, I look forward for him to uh, meet with people like my uncles and uh, my Aunt Mavis, Uncle Larklin, um, Carl's brother John, my dear friend Reggie, and the numerous, numerous other people that left us too soon. But I can only imagine the conversations they'll have as they all catch up and tell long stories of, you know, how they got there and how God has embraced them and how it's now his turn to be embraced by, by him as well. And I appreciate you all again for coming here today. And um, I only say, may you rest in peace, Daddy. Until we meet again, your lovely daughters, family, and friends, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption and seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Henry Hugh and all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Grant them the grace to forgive and live together in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those whom they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for Henry and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those whom we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.